Everyone talks about the Howes, the Gretzkys, the Auras, and Messiers, but what about the guys who made their teams better outside the spotlight? These players simply don't get the respect they deserve. That's why we're exposing the most underrated players today on The Lineup. Welcome to The Lineup, the only game show where you might get hit in the face with an octopus. I'm your host, Adam Reed. Let's see what guests we've got lined up. Welcome to the show, Justin Kingsley. You are a New York Times bestseller who had a chance of interviewing GSP, and there's quite a story on that, right? Well, I was writing that book, and it was my first time sitting down with George and Faraz Zahabi, who was one of the world's foremost mixed martial His arts coaches. His trainer, of course. Coaches. Yep. And the first 90 minutes of the first interview about the book, they spent explaining to me the various ways you can kill someone without, <laughs> without ever getting found out. Your chair was slowly backing away from where it was, right? Yes, the spaghetti was not as appetizing anymore. And I just, in my head, I'm like, okay, is nice. it a message? Are they fooling with me? But nice. uh, I made it, so we're good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. You'll be joined by Brendan Kelly. You're a well-known writer. You also cover the Habs, and you also are quite the hockey player yourself, right? Well, in my own mind. Legend in my own <laughs> mind. I play with the F-Men, legendary Westmount Garage League team, 11 o'clock uh, Sunday nights. Nice. Uh, we have our own Superman jerseys. All right, uh, all right. We're rocking. All right. Well, welcome to the show. Thank team you. Ben. All right. You guys are going to be facing off against Team Blue. Uh, Doug Gallivan, you're a CBC a reporter. Uh, you cover sports. And you were also featured on a Japanese reality TV show. What's yeah, up with that? By accident. We were on our way in Japan to get our licenses renewed. And out of nowhere, this Japanese television crew <laughs> comes around the corner. And all of a sudden, we're making a meal for this woman who's traveling across the country begging for meals. That's the show. As far as I know, we were the only non-Japanese people on that show in the four years that it ran. It was uh, quite an experience. And just to make this clear, is this footage available anywhere online that we can look uh, at? Not on, um, oof, maybe. Yeah, there yeah, you go. You're going to have to go. dig a little bit. All right. Yeah. Frank Cavallaro, you're an exceptional broadcaster, and uh, you've got a hidden talent, right? Uh, foosball, if I understand. Biardini? Yeah, B Biardini. Uh, Biardino is a... Uh, table soccer, right, which football. I've been playing since I was four years old. My wow. dad got me the game, the Italian original version in right. my basement. And I've been in various tournaments, and it helps supplement my income. It pays for my gas Look and stuff. Look at this guy. He's got his <laughs> gas. So I, it does. So I go to tournaments. I, I challenge you and Freeway Frank to a doubles match. Do you accept? Of course. Well no done. Problem. And by the way, I just want to compliment our red team for dressing up for the occasion here. Oh! oh, oh below the belt. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh. You'll get your chance. Over the next three periods, our two teams are going to engage in a battle of knowledge and strategy on their way to creating a list of the top 10 most under Underrated players. The hockey pros at Watch Mojo have selected 20 players who they feel are most likely to make this list. Gentlemen, teams, this is your draft pool. A lot of these players have accumulated some accolades or even been named to the Hall of Fame. But when discussing the best of the best, these guys are too often overlooked by hockey fans and commentators alike. Just for fun, we're going to hide the names of two picks. Those are wild cards. You can pick those at any time. We've also selected a player who we feel is most likely to be at the top of the list, and that is our MVP. That's Mr. Ron Francis. He's off the table for now. All right, Team Red, out of curiosity, underrated is subjective. Um, anybody missing up there? Any players that you would have liked to see on that list? Oh, there's a lot of players I would have liked to see on that list. Anybody in particular? Well, Mike, Mike Keane's one guy. I actually mm. named my son after Mike Keane. That's just the kind of player, you know what? He won three, I think the only player to win three cups with three different teams. Just a real character player. You guys agree with that? Mike Keane? Yeah, Keane was great. Okay, we got some, all right, ah, some synergy. Thank you, Doug. Uh, no, I have a lot of love on the set here. There's yes. one guy we can all agree on is Mike Keane. Uh, for me, it's Ilya Kovalchuk, who was not on that list. He's a guy who played 12 seasons in the NHL. He played a lot of those seasons in Atlanta, and that's for, probably one of the reasons why we forget about him so much. But for the years that he was in the league, he put up some great numbers, a couple 50-goal seasons. Now he's wallowing somewhere in It's really Russia. too bad he was not a team player, but other than that... And and ruined Great the CBA of, with that contract. Frank, any well. player comes to uh, mind real quick? <laughs> Luke Robitaille. Luke Robitaille. Well done. You know, uh, drafted, uh, what, 190th? And, uh, I mean, look at the seasons he had with LA. But was he actually underrated? I mean, I think he's a, like a kind of iconic well, player. I'm, I, are you clear on the concept yeah, he's, of the show? He, he was underrated. I will say this. There's a little bit too much of love on this set. I want to turn this to hey. <laughs> Let's get started. It's time for the entry draft. In the entry draft, each team will have a chance to pick some players to get them started. We'll go back and forth, good old playground style, with both teams picking their first three players. You guys won the tug of war backstage, so you guys get to go first. Team Blue, who's your first pick? 
I think we should go with Adam Oates as that pick. This nice. guy was the ultimate assist man out there. And for me, I really bump him up my list because I believe in NHL 97, the video game, he was rated 100 <laughs> in that game. So video game. games is your criteria? Well, it's, it's part, part of it. Part of. Plus, right. I like Hall and Oates. So, uh. Nice. <laughs> there it is. That was our nickname. Absolutely. You're a counter pick, Team Red. We're going to go with the Montreal Canadiens, Steve Shutt. Yeah. Won five cups in Montreal, got a career high of 105 points, including 60 goals. Uh, the first left winger in NHL history to tally that many in 76-77 and was a first all-star all, all team member. Great. Counterpick, Team Bob Blue. We need your pick? Yeah. yeah, go for it. Yeah, Bernie Nichols. Bernie Nichols, one of only eight players in league history to tally 70 goals in a regular season. He did that in 88-89 with the Kings and named to three All-Star games and had six 30-goal seasons. Good pick. Not bad. Counter pick. Let's go. Our counter is Dale Howardchuck. Dale Howardchuck. Not too bad. Any reason in particular? The Jets. Yeah. <laughs> we need a Jet. We need someone from Winnipeg. We need some representation from the Prairies. And there's a Francophone punk crowd. rock band. Named Lee Dale, Lee Dale Howard 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 All right, so the musician, the musical talents of this player is your criteria. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right. Team Blue, your final pick. I, I love Dino Cicerelli. He was a guy who every hockey coach I had growing up told us to model our game after him. I don't know if that was a compliment to all Dino hard. Cicerelli, but that guy got himself in front of the net, and wow, did he put the puck in yeah, a lot. When he was in front of the net, he was incredibly difficult for goaltenders. Good pick. Team Red? Go. I'm going with Mark Howe. Mark Howe? Mark Howe, great defenseman, great family, but lived in the shadows of his dad. And, and when you played against him, you dreaded it. We dreaded it as fans, kids growing up. That's the guy. Was a runner-up for the Norris Trophy three times and went to the Cup Finals three times as a player, but never won it. But he would win it four times as a pro scout with the Red Wings and named to five All-Star Games. Excellent pick. All right, out of curiosity, um, any personal favorites that's missing up there, Team Blue? That's missing from yeah. up there? <sighs> Might not necessarily be considered as most underrated, but maybe a personal favorite player of the years. Doug Gilmore was always my uh, favorite player growing up, mainly because we shared a name. But the problem with having the same name as Doug Gilmore, you remember those milk commercials that he did? Uh, yeah. It was like, hey, Dougie, what's your secret? You know how many times in my life I've been asked that question because of that? <laughs> Uncountable amount of times. Team Red? Uh, Wickenizer. Wow, okay, okay. Haley Wickenizer. Of course, of course. It's a sexist list. <laughs> We've got yeah. a problem with that. Oh, it's, oh, it's my God. Team Red! <laughs> Where's Caroline? You know, where yeah, are... Yeah, come on. Where the Cami Granado, Karen Bai, Caroline Willett. Because it's 2017. Yeah. I mean, come on. I will say this, though. You guys are absolutely owning it. I love the energy you guys are bringing. You're off to a great start with three strong draft picks, but that was the easy part. It's time for the next round, Game Night. If our teams really want to stack their roster, they'll need to rely on their hockey knowledge because game night is all about trivia. Every time a team answers a question correctly, they get to draft first. The first two questions are a one-on-one -on -one trivia showdown. Whoever buzzes in first gets to answer. If they get it wrong, the other team can steal. If neither of them get it right, the person who buzzed in first wins the round and gets the pick. All right, Frank, Justin, come on up. Frank Cavallaro versus Justin Kingsley. Look at this. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Intimidation. Intimidation. All right, here we go. This son of a hockey legend started his NHL career playing alongside his father. Mark Howe. Mark Howe? Yeah. Mark Howe was correct. Hartford Whalers. No, but yeah, Mark Howe. While Mark retired with 742 career points and an astounding plus minus 400. Yes, Justin. His brother wow. Marty finished his NHL career with only 31 points in 97 aren't, games. Aren't you supposed to finish you know asking you the know question? What? You got it right. Let's pull up the job pool. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. 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 Let's go. Let's go. That's called Back the Kobayashi places. Maru. Wow. Team Red. The Kobayashi wow. Maru. Bro. Love it. Team Red, you've earned the right to pick. What's your first Punch pick? That's right. Let's go for... Like, we got to think. we got to balance our offense. We need yeah. D. We need your pick. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Larry Murphy it is. Larry Murphy, okay. Team Blue, your counter pick. Uh, we'll go with uh, nice. Andrew Chuck, Andrew Chuck. For sure. He was a, <laughs> so unappreciated on that Stanley Cup winning team for right. the Tampa Bay Lake. A little bit of trash talk in there, Frank. You, you, like, is there a loss of respect? Of, like, what's going on here? Nice suit, though. I like his shirt. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. You both said the same thing. I like that. You know that. what? I think it's about winning the game, Frank, not what you're wearing. Well, if you want to win the game, picking Larry Murphy probably wasn't the right move. That's the right. The guy's captain dumping chase I, there. I love he? the fact that you guys are talking trash. Come up here. Come up the boat on both of you. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do it, Doug. Brendan, Doug, your question is... 
While he currently sits, sits fifth all time in career points, this Hall of Famer, who spent his 22 year career primarily with the Hartford Whalers, Pittsburgh Penguins, and Carolina Hurricanes, was selected to only four All Star games. Red? Ron Francis. That's correct, Ron Francis. Well yes. done, yes. Sorry, Doug. He's now the general manager and part owner of the Hurricanes, was known as Ronnie Franchise when he was in Hartford, since he pretty much kept the Whalers afloat. How do you go back to your positions? Pull up the draft pool. Team Red, once again, you guys get the pick. Who's it gonna be? I, uh, what do you think? Well, I hated Michel Goulet. I hated him. Let's take him. I think we take him. <laughs> right. okay. Just for the yeah. stash. Just for the stash. Michel Goulet. Team Blue, your well, counterpick. Well, if they're picking a guy based on mustache, I think we should pick Mike Gardner, who also had an epic yep. mustache. So, uh, All right, mustache for mustache. mustache All right. wars are on. There yeah. we go. All right, I want some more bad blood on this set. For these next two questions, we're turning up the heat. Instead of getting one draft pick for a correct answer, teams will win two. Also, the winner of this round will get to force a trade on the other team so they could take their least desirable player and swap it out for the other team's top pick. I'll read out a question that will require a team to place four items in the right order. Teams can choose to play the question or pass it. Being right wins you the next pick. All right, this question is for you, Team Red. Rank these teams in the chronological order in which underrated playmaker Adam Oates first played for them, starting with the earliest. Before I give you your options, Team Red, do you wish to play? Or you could always pass it over to these fine gentlemen. We'll do it. Oh, we're doing it. <laughs> yeah. What? I mean, we are yeah. doing this. We are not yeah. giving these clowns sure. anything. Sure. <laughs> your options are Boston Bruins, St. Louis Blues, Washington Capitals, Detroit Red Wings. Your timer starts now. Team Blue, out of curiosity, do you think the hockey pros that watch Mojo got it right by saying the MVP was Ron Francis? I think so. He's yeah. a Hall of Famer through and through. Pretty underappreciated because he did play in Hartford and in Steady. Carolina. He had that one little stint with the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, which kind of upped his profile near the end of his career. But yeah. on the list, I, I think, think that's and Frank yeah, longevity-wise. Yeah, oh, I mean, he career. was yeah, he was like as steady as you can get him and uh, good player. Did he not win the Lady Bing as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken? So, uh, all right, yep. Let's take a look and see if these guys are steady in their answers. We asked you to rank these teams in the order in which Adam Oates first played for them, starting with the earliest. You said Washington Capitals, the Blues, Bruins, and Red Wings, and that is incorrect. The answer is Detroit Red Wings, St. Louis Blues, Boston Bruins, and then the Capitals. Oates played alongside Brett Hall and St. Louis. The duo was dubbed Hall and Oates. <laughs> Team Blue, you I now can, have I the I can next go for that. I can you go guys get for the next that. Yeah. Who is it? Um, well, we want Pierre Turgeon. Pierre Turgeon? All right. And All that for Pierre Turgeon. You can have him. Yeah, Perfect. Take him. That's the best yeah, mistake we've we made in a long time. card number one or two? Let's go number two. All right. Number two? Steve Larmer won Calder yeah. Trophy in 1983, yeah. played in 884 consecutive games with the Blackhawks, an NHL record for most straight games with one club, and he scored his 1,000th point in his final NHL season, 1994-95. All right, your two picks. Let's go. Let's counter this. Well, we like Osgood. Absolutely. We need someone in nets. Yeah. Chris great, Osgood. Great face grip. Yeah. Speaking of which, the last goalie to wear a traditional uh, helmet cage won three cups with the Red Wings and is 10th all time among goalies for regular season victories. I mean, what kind of team is the blue team with no goalie? It's going to work out really <laughs> well. Be good. Your second pick, Team Red? Uh, <laughs> no, I kind of like, do we go old school and go like for an old. An old? I, I, I'm, I'm liking uh, Johnny Busick. Okay. No? Johnny Old Music. school and new school. Johnny Bruins, Music. I mean. All right, All right Team it. Blue, this is the chance where you guys get to give someone up. You guys could take whatever you want off their list. Who are you giving away and who are you stealing? They seem to really not like Pierre Turgeon, so yeah. we could probably give them Turgeon and... Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Howard Chuck? Yeah, I would go with Howard Chuck. Yeah, we'll take Howard Chuck, and you guys can have Pierre Turgeon. There you so go. So you fell for the cracks about Turgeon. Uh, you played right uh, into what we wanted. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> strategy. Let's see if that continues for this next question. The winner once again gets two picks. And not only that, they get to go on the power play, meaning they get to send one of their opponents into the penalty box for the next round. This question's for you, Team Blue. Place these players in order from the highest points per game average to lowest. Before I give you your options, you want to pass to these guys? Or do no. you want to play the question? Nobody passes. <laughs> take the shot, right? Well, Let's right, because you guys shot. are not team players. That's the so. new generation. <laughs> shoot, yeah. shoot, shoot, yeah, forget that's about it. the me, pass. Me, me, me. You I will play? sorry for these guys. Your yeah. options are Mario Lemieux, Paul Correa, Wayne Gretzky, Marcel Dion. Go. Mention Paul Correa. Think he maybe deserves to be on that list? 
one of the most underrated? No, no, because he's not underrated. I mean, he was a he was a ma major star in the league. I don't. I mean, he's a great, great player, but he's not underrated. Yeah, Justin. Oh, I'm with him. He's my line mate. And he doesn't often get enough praise. We're right? not going to be fighting each that's other. True, so that's true. Don't even go there. But he doesn't often get the praise, right? He's not necessarily recognized as being that. I mean, yes, he's done some great things in his career. Yeah, but then but to you, be... if you look at guys like that, then you got to look at Marcel Dion and, and some of that generation mm -hmm. of guys who, who played on bad teams but did unbelievable things, you know? Well said, well said. Yeah. Go with this All one. right, Team Blue, we need your answer. Here we go. We it's asked hard because there's like letters and stuff. There's reading yeah. involved. You want us to come that. over and show you how the yeah. laptop thing works? Yeah. You, you yeah. see these suits? Yeah. <laughs> that means we That's can all read. you have. Yeah. We yeah. asked yeah. you yeah. have. That's right. <laughs> we asked you to place these players in order from the highest points per game average to lowest. Team Blue, you said Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Paul Correa, Marcel Dion. Incorrect. Oh, so close. Gretzky, oh. Lemieux, Dion, and Korea. By the way, Korea averages one point per game. Marcel Dion, 1.3 oh. points per game. All right, that was the team effort, guys. You tried your best. Yeah. You've earned the right for two picks. Who are your next two picks? Who do you want? I go with Linden. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, your second pick, Trevor Linden. You go. I you think go, we Justin. go wild card number one. Wild card number one. Vincent Danfous, <laughs> yes. named to four what NHL All-Star Games, was the MVP of the 91 All-Star Game, won the Cup in 93 with the Habs. He reached his career peak of 97 regular season points during that same season. All right, he, he well was done. crying when they traded. Yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah, that's all oh, I remember. Yeah. Too. I mean, the match <laughs> oh, oh, the match yeah. man over there. Oh, oh, loyalty. Loyalty. It's oh, that's just big boy. It's big boy. Team Blue, I need your picks. They just stop trying to make your picks. Focus. Let's go with um, Nicholas Backstrom. Nicholas Backstrom, okay. And the fellow Paisan, Alex Del Vecchio. Alex Del Vecchio got 1,281 career points over 24 seasons, won the cup three <laughs> times in Detroit, inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1977, his jersey retired in 91, named to 13 NHL All-Star Games, and there's even a statue of him at uh, Joe Louis Arena. Chances are, viewers probably have never heard that name before. I, Good I read that his nickname was Fats. Is that true? Yes. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that, aware. That bumps him up a level. In a couple my of you know what's surprising right? about that nickname. is that you were reading. So ah, all this trash talk. I'm loving this. Team Red, you've earned yourself the right to send one of these fine gentlemen to the penalty box. Who will it be? I'm kind of tempted to send Frank. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be really fun. But you know what? Let's compete with Frank by himself. That'll be more fun. <laughs> Doug Gallivan in the box. That's a garbage call. You know <laughs> it. Doug, you're taking two for the team. Get in that penalty box. Welcome to the Speed Drill. Teams have to answer five rapid-fire questions. Whoever gets more correct gets that sweet, sweet MVP pick. Ronnie Franchise. Teammates can work together on this one. Of course, one of our teams is shorthanded. The good news for them, though, in the case of a tie, they win. Do you want us to show you how the laptop works, Frank? Don't worry, guys. I'm ready. Bring it on. Here we go. <laughs> Your question is, for each of the players we name, tell us which superstitious ritual they practiced. Question one. Sidney Crosby lifts his feet when crossing railroad tracks in the team bus or chants putt luck under his breath when he hits the post. Yeah. Question two. Glenn Hall eats a cheeseburger before every game or vomited before every game. It's a trick question. He's, he doesn't play <laughs> yeah, anymore. Trick. Right. Yaramir Yager enjoys milk and cookies the night before a game, or does he watch football pump-up videos on YouTube before the game? Hmm. Mm -mm. He's European. No, you think milk and cookies? Okay. Mm. Come on, guys, come on. Brent Seabrook eats seven Hershey's Kisses right before a game, or hugs Patrick Kane before each game? A lot of people hug Patrick Kane. Yeah, that's yeah. a whole team. So it's a trick question. Wayne Gretzky, no haircuts on the road or no showers the day before a playoff game? Come on. All right, gentlemen. Come on. Frank, a little bit of confidence going on there, Frank. No problem. No problem. Here we go. We asked you for question number one. We wanted to know for each of these players we named, tell us which superstitious ritual they practice. Question number one was Sidney Crosby. Team Blue, you said lifts his feet. Team Red, lifts his feet. Correct answer is lifts his feet when crossing railroad tracks in the team bus, 1-1. Then we asked you for Glenn Hall. 
Does he eat a cheeseburger before every game or vomits? You both said vomits. The correct answer is vomits. Well done. Well done. Nice. It's a tie, Frankie. You're looking good, baby. No problem. You're looking good. It's fixed. It's fixed. It's all about the looks <laughs> with Frank. <laughs> Yarmir Yager enjoys milk and cookies before a game, or does he watch football videos? You both said milk and cookies. That is correct. <sighs> Woo! Good call. Oh, yeah. Good call. We're going to the shootout. Question four. Brent Seabrook eats seven Hershey kisses before a game, or does he hug Patrick Kane? You both said Patrick Kane. That is incorrect. <sighs> He eats Ooh. seven Hershey Kisses Ooh. right before a game. That's a tie. Right now it's a tie. It comes down to this final, final question. question. This Ooh. is good. On the great one himself. Okay, Somehow Frank. he always makes it great. I don't know how he does that. Wayne Gretzky, no haircuts on the road or no showers. You both said no haircuts on the road. And that's the correct answer. Frankie Steele on the MVP. Ron Francis, yeah, well done. Yeah. You have earned yourself Woo. the MVP who won two straight cups <laughs> in Pittsburgh, named only four times to the All-Star Game, You're won the Serving Trophy, me, <laughs> and Lady Bang in the same season is ranked fifth all-time in career NHL points. On a side note, you've earned that. However, Gene Rattel, it's not a bad pickup. He won the Lady Bing Trophy for sportsmanship twice. He amassed 1,267 career points over 1,281 games. He's a point-per-game player. Not bad for Lady you guys. Lady Bing, he has class. He's, he's a cooler, class. And he's a cooler class. You're trying try to sum your list already? Class. Is that what you're trying to do? Yeah. All right, the draft pool is now empty and trivia is done, and that's the end of game night. But we are not done yet. It's time for the final countdown. Team Blue, you guys are back at even strength. Welcome back. Thank you. you nice shorthanded goal there from Frank. You know? How uh, lonely was it in the penalty box? Oh, it wasn't bad. I went a little tight domey there, so some fans were jumping over. <laughs> nice. And joining nice this. reference. <laughs> I like that. Our teams will now rank their draft picks from 10 to 1 to create their list of the top 10 most underrated players. Gentlemen, you have 60 seconds, and then we'll see whose list is the ultimate. Your 60 seconds starts now. Enforcers are often painted as mindless meatheads looking for trouble. Forever a footnote in the sport. Well, just maybe they deserve a bit more respect. First, there's the late Bob Probert, half of Detroit's infamous Bruise Brothers. The Wings' tormented tough guy had a heart to match his haymakers. For instance, when he was eliminated from the reality competition show Battle of the Blades, missing the chance to earn big money for charity left him devastated. George Dirac was voted Sports Illustrated's top enforcer in 2008, but he really brought the fight to children's charities in Edmonton. Then, he earned the team's community service award four times. And he's been an outspoken advocate of the environment for a decade. How about Ty Domi, the all-time fights leader, wrote in his recent book that he saw his role in the ice as someone who stood up to bullies. His job, he says, was to shield the more vulnerable goal-scoring players, like, you know, his son Max. So instead of goons, let's remember this dying breed as teddy bear toughies who protected the game's grace. So we had memories to last a lifetime. Speaking of teddy bear tough guys, let's talk uh, Team Blue. What do you got? What's your list? Number one, we had to go with the MVP. Ron Francis, and I don't think that's in dispute. He was listed as the MVP. You agree with that? Well, it's easy. It's obvious. It's yeah, basic like could, math. Right. Some, some no, of your own there are thoughts, some, people some who of your say, own no, ideas here. Fairness, that, that's like the there, two foot tapping. There, you just there tap are some it players. In. There are some people who say that Ron Francis is not the most underrated player. They, there's other players on that list, so that's interesting. Okay, just asking. Adam Oates could easily be number one, as far as I'm concerned. Adam Oates is my number one, but I'm not the one that makes the call. Uh, what else? What do you got? Number two, Adam Oates. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, good pick. Uh, Dave Andrzejczyk, number six, uh, right behind Dino Cicerelli. Okay, that's interesting. You spoke very highly of him. You hold him in high regard. Well, I love Dave Andrzejczyk just for what he did over his entire career. Well, especially he speaks the very he highly of it. you, too. <laughs> yeah, <that's great. laughs> yeah. Enough, enough about your personal emotions, <laughs> Doug. But Dino Cicerelli. Discussing hockey. I mean, this guy was the ultimate underappreciated player. Well, one of the ultimate, I guess, on my ranking five. Do you think you have enough on the list to pull it out? Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Then this again, you would never say. No, we're going to so crush them. Let's take a look at these guys. Who's the best salesman between you two? Oh, no, he is. You are? All right, we're starting with, we're starting with Shuddy. I mean, honestly, he almost is another one I wouldn't Shuddy. put as under. Steve Shutt. Do you know him on a personal basis? Is that what you call him? <laughs> no, no, Shuddy. I mean, it's Shuddy. It's just like, oh, you've ever heard yes. nicknames? He was just a shot. Yeah. Yeah. He was just a beneficiary. You know oh, yeah, come is. on. You know? Was he not I'll just the beneficiary of great teams? Yeah. No, yeah, 60 goals. It was just by accident. Fought with four or five Stanley <laughs> Cups. He's just got lucky. Michel Goulet ahead of Mark Howe. Yeah, that, you guys. What? Man. Yeah. Come on, guys. Is this, you guys. Michelle Bliss, is there a personal connection Listen, there? Listen, it's, it's about, when you put a team together, it's not just numbers. It's about emotion. 
<laughs> what a guy it is. You, you okay. know what? It's the ultimate team sport. And what we did, which they didn't do, is we constructed a team. We've got a goalie. That's not going to make the playoffs. We've got a starting five. We we've got, got a team. We've the got analytics character. Guys we've are got gonna skill. Kill we've you got grit. Those. We've got the whole package. You know what? You might think you have the whole package, but I gotta give it to Team Blue. Well yes. done. Yeah. 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 Well done. Go Justin. Really? Go Justin. Yeah. Go Justin. Yeah. Go yeah. Justin. Yeah. Team Red, congratulations. You guys still did a great job. Justin, uh, you're doing some great stuff. Where can people catch some of the uh, projects you're involved with? Makumaku.ca, that's my creative workshop I uh, just launched recently. I'm writing a book, doing a movie, a documentary about a man who's under house arrest, but he's never home. So you can follow it all there. Nice, <laughs> the premise itself just sold me. Oh, where can we catch you? You know what? You should look up What the Puck is a, is, is a column I do online for the Montreal Gazette. Uh, sort of very critical, sometimes vitriolic uh, look oh, at the Montreal Canadiens. a fancy Canadian. word there. A little fancy yeah, word. Well, I'm, uh, I'm a writer. What go. can Bre I say? Brendan so, Kelly, uh, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it, it. All right. Team Blue, Frank Cavallero, what are you up to? Uh, anything you want to know about weather, soccer, hockey, uh, follow me on Twitter, FCavallaroCBC, whatever you want to ask me, you know, any sports, trivia, whatever, I'm ready for you as yeah, I proved right. it today. Here. And uh, foosball, eh? Don't forget That's our challenge. Right. <laughs> Doug, where can we catch you? Yeah, What's going on? watch us daily on CBC News Montreal. Uh, you can catch us online as well. And, of course, on Twitter, if you ever want to yell at me about my opinions, that's easy to do there at D. Gellivan. Nice. Thanks for taking the time, guys. Really appreciate it. I thought Team Blue had the better list, but, hey, I'm just an underappreciated award-winning sports host. <laughs> Tell us in the comments who you thought you had the stronger list. I'm Adam Reed, and we'll catch you next time on The Lineup. Check out more episodes of The Lineup here, and be sure to subscribe to Watch Mojo for more great videos every day.